This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today transcribed, we present Chapter 12, Book 71, entitled, The Return of the Second Assistant Cook. It's another weekend, and Paul and Joan, after five days at the airfield and living in town, jumped in the car and were at the Sky Ranch in no time. Nikki had horses all saddled and waiting, and almost before they'd had a chance to announce their arrival and dump the Saturday mail on the hall table, they were in their vacation clothes and on their way back into the Santa Cruz Mountain Trails via horseback. Oh. Oh. Hey, Nikki. Yes, Paul? Let's pull up here in the shade and give the horses a little breather. <laughs> the horses and who else? Oh, oh. Well, I will admit I'm out of practice. That saddle's been dusting the seat of my pants like a spanking machine. <laughs> Try to... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, say, Joan's falling a little behind. Come on, slowpoke. We're going to take a little rest. Okay, be right with you. She's a bit on the warm side of the day. Yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, girl. Easy, Sky Girl. I got her, Joan. Come on oh, down. Thanks. Oh, there. Now, just throw the reins over her head, Paul. She'll stand. Okay. Well, you got a little steam up in you, old girl. Huh? Oh, here's a nice redwood log in the shade. Just made to water. Sit down, Joan. Hmm, nice mossy seat with my back against this padrone. Hmm. Hey, do I feel a cool breeze coming up the canyon, Nicky? That's right. With a tang of salt in the air. Well, after all, the ocean's just over the next range. I picked this spot a long time ago. Often right up here. Hmm. I'll bet I'll be the sorest, stiffest hombre who ever threw a leg over a horse tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly what you'd call a horsey fellow. <laughs> a little jaunt like this shouldn't bother you. Uh, we still got the ride back, you know. <laughs> you do look kind of funny on a horse, Uncle Paul. Well, that's because I don't have the clothes for it. Put me in one of those fancy riding outfits like you and Nicky wear, and I'll wager I'd cut quite a figure. Oh, oh. These overalls I borrowed don't do a thing <laughs> for me. Whose are they, anyway? <laughs> they look like Ben's. Well, one thing, I don't have to worry about getting them dirty. I'm going to sit on the ground leaning against the log. Yeah, that's the ticket. Nikki, you and Joan ought to try this solid comfort. Oh, I'm fine right here, old man. I don't feel a bit tired. Yeah, there speaks youth. <laughs> hey, I just thought of something. Why didn't I think to take Kenny riding last weekend when he was up here? Hmm. Bring a man to a horse breeding farm and not take him riding? <laughs> Sounds silly, but I didn't even think to ask him. Oh, you missed out by not being here for young Arthur's visit. Yes, so John told me. Well, incidentally, you're quite right about that boy, Paul. He's a brick. Everybody liked him tremendously. I understand there were no fulminations on Dad's part. <laughs> if you mean explosions, I think Ken would have had more fun if there had been. He was bored to death. No, I don't think he was bored exactly. He's rather a shy fellow, and your grandfather overawed him, that's all. Honestly, Paul, grandfather took him and told him I hardly got to see him alone at all. No. Do you suppose he did that on purpose so I wouldn't have Kenny to myself? <laughs> wouldn't put it past him. Did Dad really get to like him, or was he just being the gentleman? Whether he liked Ken or not, I don't know. He hasn't committed himself to me on that point. I asked him right out if he didn't like Ken now that he'd met him, and I got the usual answer. What? A grunt? <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, however he really felt, the old boy certainly enjoyed himself in the role of the perfect gentleman. He was so polite and hurt. You know how stiff he gets when he wants to be very dignified. Yes, yes, Mr. Arthur, hope you have a pleasant weekend. Yes, yes, you'll find the air very invigorating. Oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, Paul, oh. and he was all spruced up in white trousers and a dark double-breasted coat. Who, kid? <laughs> no, silly grandfather. Awful. I'm glad I couldn't be here. I couldn't have taken it. But you should have seen him conducting Kenny on tours. And there I was, tagging along, dying. I just stood around trying to get a word in once in a while, but Grandfather kept rattling on, like he had a spiel, you know, a guided tour. Didn't the poor kid have any fun at all? Well, we got in some swimming. Oh, he liked that. With Grandfather practically holding our hands. He was going to chaperone us or bust. And a politer chaperone you never saw. Nicky, why don't you tell Mom to drag him off? Make some excuse to take him down to Woodside or something. My dear fellow, it's all well and good for you to sit there and say, why didn't you do this or why didn't you do that? But you know very well that when Father Barber makes up his mind to do something, he's going to do it. Yeah, I know. His family crest should be an irresistible force rampant on a field of immovable objects. <laughs> How right you are. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad we had Ken up, though. He loved being invited. Oh, and you and Claudia were perfectly swell to him, Nicky. He tried to thank you when he left, but you could see how kind of tongue-tied he was. Yes, he did flounder a bit. But he didn't lose grace in our sight for it. That's one reason I like him. I'll choose him over one of those smooth-talking, confident extroverts any day. You watch. The boy's going to make a good flyer. He might not talk well, but he thinks straight. 
And that's what you want when you're up a few thousand feet in the air. Quite. Oh, he said you took him up the other day, Uncle Paul, and gave him a lesson. Yeah. I'm going to try to take him again this week if I can make it. Oh, swell. He thought it was a great big old hairy deal. And you're his father and hero and little tin god all rolled into one. <laughs> My goodness, all that. Oh, and that's only the beginning. Well, when we get back to the city, we'll have him over to dinner if you like, John. Oh, thanks, Nicky. That'd be keen. Yeah, be sure to include Dad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yes. Probably show up in white tie and tails. What a man. Hope Ken didn't go away feeling he'd been given the business. Oh, of course he didn't. No, I don't think so, Paul. I tried to explain to Ken that Grandfather was a little uh, peculiar. <laughs> he didn't say anything, but I think he got kind of a kick out of Grandfather. Well, if he's able to see the humor of the situation, fine. Well, right at first he was kind of overwhelmed, but after he got a little used to Grandfather, I could see a little laugh in his eye every once in a while. Good to see how well you've taken all this, Joan. How about that, Nicky? Exactly what I told him. Do you notice how you're giving your sense of humor a chance to function, hmm? Well, I hadn't thought about it, I guess. Yeah, we take special pride on it these days, Paul. You're beginning to embarrass me. Let's ride some more. That's a good idea. Come on, Paul, old boy. Up and at him. Oh, uh, was this trip necessary? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the idea of getting on a horse doesn't appeal to me anymore. Hmm. Uh, too far to walk back, I suppose. <laughs> come on, Grandfather. I'll help you on. Good. Come on, Jen. We'll lift him on. Huh? Stand aside, <laughs> Naves. I'll mount this charger under my own power. Not only that, I'll do it with a run and a leap. Out of my way here. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh what? Uh, slipped, I guess. Oh, Polly, you hurt? You all right, old man? Uh, I'm fine. But I think I will let you help me on now. <laughs> <laughs> When William Herbert Murray, otherwise known as Pinky, insisted on working in a lumber camp for the summer, nobody in all the barber clan expected him to stick it out. But he has, and Dan, Pinky's well-intentioned stepfather, had been increasingly surprised and proud. Here it is now, the third week in September, and he still hasn't cracked under the strain. This morning, when Paul and Joan drove down from the city for the weekend, they picked up the mail, including a letter from Pinky. Dan is on the trail of that letter, which leads him finally to Father Barber's hammock. I hadn't heard there was a letter, Daniel, but then nobody tells me anything anymore. No one even seems to know who it was addressed to, but everyone agrees there is a letter. <laughs> Paul and Joan brought the mail and went off riding with Nicholas without even saying hello. Took the mail with them, no doubt. <laughs> well, I doubt that. Anyway, Clifford and I were in Redwood shopping. <laughs> Too bad, Daniel. Sit down. You'll have to wait. Well, somebody said Hazel had read the letter. I can't even find Hazel. Yes, everyone's scattered, so... Sit down, sit down. You know, Daniel, it does seem to me that when there's a letter from Pinky, it should be left in the front hallway where people can find it. Not a bad idea. When Claudia heard from him last week, why, she put the envelope in her pocket and went down to San Francisco with it, shopping. It was two whole days before anybody saw it. That was the one about playing poker with the lumberjacks. <laughs> Uh, or was it? Yes. If I'd seen that letter, I'd have written him at once and advised him. Then he wouldn't have lost money the second time. <laughs> I think he's cured, Father Barber. <laughs> Imagine those unprincipled roughnecks slyly inveigling a mere boy into a cutthroat poker game. It's a wonder it didn't cost him two weeks' wages. Out $22 altogether when he makes only 17 a week. <laughs> In his letter to Nicky, Pinky said he never wanted to see three nines again. <laughs> I gather he held three nines against a full house or something. Oh, I don't understand the game, and I don't want to. Gambling is a vicious habit. It's all been good for him, Father Barber. Every disaster of this summer is teaching him something. Oh, I agree with that, Daniel. But women don't understand those things. And not only women, either. There is something abroad in the world now. It distresses me, Daniel. The idea that uh, that it's possible to get something for nothing. Well, if you ever do, you pay for it in the end. You give up your freedom or your dignity or your honor, you pay for it. Mm -hmm. Law of compensation. I said to Fanny, if Pinky can learn in one summer that this world is no maypole dance, it may make a difference all the rest of his life. Give him an advantage over the rest of his coddled and pampered generation. You know, though, I do think we've all written him too often. Oh, well, where, where his family? You've written him every few days, haven't you? Well, Daniel, I have lots of time, you know, and haven't anything to do through the summer. I thought the boy ought to be kept abreast of things here. Well, everybody's written him too much. He was pretty homesick there at first. It was good for him. Yes, yes. But he promptly answers his mail, I'll say that for him. Oh, exactly. I was saying to Fanny... What with all this progressive education, why, that boy, 16 years old, hardly knew what a pencil was for when he left here. Oh, but he's had practice this summer. Why, my last letter was a model. There were only three misspelled words in it. And I could read all of it. Except the postscript. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Cliff. Come and join us. Why not? 
I heard the sounds of animated conversation. What's going on down uh, here? Pull up a chair, Clifford. We were just talking about Pinky's voluminous correspondence. Voluminous is right. When does he get a chance to be second assistant cook with all his letter writing? Huh? You're criticizing? Who, me? Well, hardly. No kidding, though. Roberta had a swell idea about Pinky's letters. Uh, uh, by the way, where did you and Skippy take Roberta last night, Clifford? We expected you for dinner and you were gone again. Ball game. Huh? We took her to the ball game, Dad. Yes, sir. You've kept that boy out late three or four nights a week all summer long. Do you think that's good for him? Ever see a happier-looking kid? Yes. Wrestling matches, prize fights, hopped-up car racing, baseball. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cliff, does Roberta really enjoy the uh, perspiration circuit? Sure. It's a threesome every time. <laughs> You see what a changing world it is, Daniel, when a man can court a young lady accompanied by his 11-year-old son and take her endlessly to wrestling matches and prize for... What? <laughs> In my hey, day... Hey, hey, we're way off the subject. Huh? Cliff, what was Roberta's idea about Pinky's letters? Oh, uh, make a book of them. Huh? She said there's a family in San Francisco whose son was in the army in Japan for a year or two, and they saved all his letters and had them printed and bound up and gave them to him for a Christmas present. You serve him right. Oh, huh? excellent, Daniel. You don't like it? Yeah, and if he saved the letters we wrote him, they could all be printed together. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't do that. No, no. Uh, mine, for instance, wouldn't it be of any interest to anyone. In fact, I hope he hasn't saved them. Why? Oh, uh, although they just rambled along. But I'd like to see the one that came today, however. Oh, that was to Joan. Huh? Where is she? Joan? Well, she was with Hazel and Claude when I came down. She and Paul back from their ride? Well, I want to see that letter. Oh, uh, Daniel, uh, bring it down here. Uh, after all, I am the boy's grandfather. <laughs> all right, I'll do that little thing. Oh, uh, Hazel and Claude are out in the kitchen making some limeade. How about bringing out a couple of quarts of that? I'll see what I can do for you. So don't answer this letter because I'm flying home next week. Next week? Does it say that, Claude? That's what he says here, Hazel. What else does he say? Um, and there won't be time for an answer before I leave. My love to everybody, Pinky. Goodness. Limeade invites so many interruptions, I'll have to read it again. Here comes one more interruption. Oh, who now? Paul. He was up showering and changing. Joan will be along in a minute, I suppose. She said to read her letter to everyone. Uh, I heard what was being cooked up in the kitchen. Is there limeade for a city-bred caballero? <laughs> Word certainly gets around. I'll pour. Get a glass. How about a thermos full? I'll take some to me under Nicky at the stable. Quart thermos right there. Reach for it. Mm. Joan said you had kind of a, a hot ride. Uh, it's fun, though. How do you like that new Palomino, Claudia? Sky Girl? Mm. Just a little more horse than I really need. Uh, Joan handled her very well. Did Joan show you the letter from Pinky? He's really stuck it out, hasn't he? I'm going to fool the skeptics this time. June, July, August, and half of September. That's a long way to be away from home. Hmm. You miss him a lot? Oh, you'll never know how much. Hey, uh, thermos jug ready to take out? Yep, better take two glasses. Oh, I'll take paper cups. Where are they? The lower right-hand cabinet. The lower right-hand cabinet. Oh, yes. Well, I'll take my thermos of ambrosia down and share it with Pinky. I'll take the tray with the pitcher and glasses, Claudia. Bring along the letter, and we'll go out to the patio beside the swimming pool and read it to all comers. <laughs> oh, there you are, Claudia. Joan uh, around? Hi, Dan. Well, what's the latest from Paul Bunyan, Joan? <laughs> I have Joan's letter here. Well, come on, Dan. We're just going out to beside the pool to read it again. It's a grand letter. You want to start a war? What's that? There's an old gentleman down in the hammock beginning to feel a little hurt again. About face, Claudia. We'll go down there. <laughs> here, let me take the tray. Uh -huh. I'll get the door for you. Who's with him? Anybody? Cliff. You got enough glasses? Might as well take along enough for everybody. So, uh, Clifford, now don't misunderstand me, but I heard the women talking, and I thought you'd like to hear it. Well, what is it, Dan? Mind you, I'm not interfering. Dad, what is it you want to tell me? Well, Hazel and Claudia and somebody else, uh, uh, Joan, I think, were in the pool. They thought I was asleep. They were talking about you and Roberta. Now, Clifford, women know about these things. Look, Dad, I'm not going to get sore, no matter what it is. Well, they said that Roberta is a very agreeable, very, very charming girl. But no woman wants to go on dates forever with a man and his son. No, she might not let you suspect how she felt... And we all admire you for what you've done with Skippy this summer. Oh, with Andy. Uh, yes, Andrew. Yes. But you can carry a good thing too far, and they seem to feel that now and again it would be wise to take Roberta out alone. Oh, hey, Dad, are you going to help me with this deal? You like Roberta that much? Right. She, she's a wonderful young woman. I, uh, oh, uh, no more now. We'll talk about it later. Oh, Why later? Oh, company. Hi, company. Hey, move that table over here, will you? Cliff, this thing's heavy. Yeah, here, Dan. Sir. 
Claudia Hazel. Well, this is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's, where's Joan and her letter? I have the letter here, Dad. Hey, uh, who's this for? Huh? This glass tube with a bend in it. They sent me back for that. It's a bent glass straw. Huh? What's it for? For you, Father. So you can lie in the hammock and still sip your drink. A bent glass straw. Now, isn't that for? Here, give this to Father Claude. You don't even have to lift your head. <sighs> yes, yes. Where's your mother? Taking a nap. She just got back from a walk with Betty and the children. Uh, I hate to see this summer coming to an end. I really do. Don't say it. I don't even want to think about packing. Well, when does school start, anyway? Oh, we've made arrangements for the children to be a week or so late returning to school. September's such exquisite weather. However, we'll go back after next weekend, don't you think, Dan? Mm, I may run down a little early. Why are improvements made like this only at the end of the summer? Now, take this straw now. All this blessed summer long, I've had to sit up to drink lemonade. Oh, that's pretty darn tough. <laughs> yes, we'll have to tell Pinky what you went through this summer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when are we going to hear that letter? Right now, if Claudia will bring it out. Uh, Claudia, I was saying to Daniel, letters from Pinky should be left in the front hall where everybody can see them. There, Joan was riding in the mountains, and here we were anxious to see the letter. If she'd left it in the hall... Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. I don't think Joan knew that was the rule. Oh, no rule. Just a good idea. Nobody does it. Oh, I can talk, 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 and no one pays any attention to me. <laughs> Pretty late in the season to begin establishing new ground rules, Father Barber. The letter, Claudia, the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Dad, you read it. You sure you want me to? Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I'll sit up for this. Take my glass, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Now, my glasses. Here you are, Dan. Yes, yes, Clifford. Thank you. Now, then, everybody ready? I've been ready for this for three hours. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, I was telling Daniel Hazel that I'm proud of him for the way he's handled Pinky this summer. Yes, it's a difficult thing for a stepfather, to, if I may mention this. It's a difficult thing for a stepfather to do what he knows to be right if it is going to entail any hardship for a youngster. I remember one time a Fred Thompson... Father, everybody wants to hear the letter. Huh? Well, so do I. I was just going to tell you about Fred Thompson and his nephew. Father? Huh? Oh, uh, all right. Everybody ready? Yeah. Dear Joni. Oh, Joni. Well, now, that's a term of affection I've never heard him use before. Oh, come on, Father Barber, come on. Huh? Yeah, Dad, you're holding up the parade. Am I, indeed? Well, we'll start again. Wilderness Lumber Camp Number 4, August 28, 1949, via Airmail. Dear Joni. The day your last letter came, there was one from Uncle Paul, two from Grandfather, and one each from Uncle Nicky, Aunt Claudia, and Mum. I've had wonderful mail this summer. Some members of the family wrote me every day and some every other day. They are, Hazel. What did I tell you? Too much. Yes, that, that's true. In fact, I may have been a little guilty myself. I'd hoped he'd have periods when he didn't get any letters. You know, let him get the feeling that he had to solve his own problems. All of them, including homesickness. Pinky's had plenty of problems. By the time he pays his debts up there, he won't have anything from his summer's work. Yakety, yakety, yak. I'm interested in the letter if nobody else is. Huh? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, where was I? Well, we'll start all over. Wilderness Lumber Camp number four. You were down in the second paragraph where it said every other day. Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, oh, every other day. Uh, altogether, I've had about a hundred letters, and when things were tough, I would get them out and read them over and over. I sure thank you for yours, Joan, which is the biggest surprise I ever had. It was nice of you to send me a check. Huh? Claudia. you. Why, Daniel didn't well, want She to... couldn't have sent him very much. Besides, she earned it. It was very sweet of her. Yes, of course. Forget it. It's it's just that Hazel and I were trying to put Pinky up against reality, make him get along without help. I know, Dan. And I know why she sent it. When she heard he'd broken all those dishes and lost his wages for weeks and weeks. She's a darling, and it was very, very thoughtful. Yes, I know, and it was a very thoughtful gesture. It was only the principle of hey, the Hey, do I have to take that letter and read it to myself? Huh? Yes, why do you keep interrupting me? Oh. Now I've lost my place. <laughs> it was where he said it was nice of Joan to send him a check. Yeah. Uh... Yes, have you just sent me a check? My salary of seventeen dollars is fourteen ten by the time I get it. And besides breaking the dishes and losing over a week's wages learning to play poker, I also had to pay for the front bumper on Mr. Orsati's car. What's this? It's all right, Dan. Let him read it. Yes, yes. Mr. Orsati sent me over to Camp 
two in his jalopy to get three cases of Boston baked beans, and something went wrong with the steering wheel, and I hit a rail fence and one tree. Oh, hey, how fast was he going, does he say? Uh, no, no, he, he wasn't hurt. It says, nothing was hurt but the fender and the bumper, and one old tire blew up. Well, that comes pretty close to being a smasher. There's Mr. Osati right. <laughs> <laughs> but I had the car fixed with my own money, and Mr. Osati is speaking to me again. Don't answer this letter, because I'm flying home next week. Mm. Flying? That's what it says. Well, how can he fly home? I thought he'd have to take a bus. I wanted him to have to take a bus. Hazel, did you send him any money? Oh. Now, uh, let's read this. It's the most interesting part. Oh, hey, what's that? Well, it's Nicky on the new Palomino. Something's happened. Yeah, Hazel! Oh, is it Margaret or, or Hank? Oh, Dan. I say, didn't you see that taxi drive in? Huh? What taxi? We've been reading Pinky's letter. Is anything wrong? Well, don't bother to read Pinky's letter. Pinky's here. Pinky? Huh? Yeah. Oh, what? He's, He's here. Oh, boy. I'll leave the horse here. Come on, he looks top notch. He's grown three inches. Thank you, Pinky. Well, 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 let's don't waste time. Let's get well, to the house. Well, I tell you, there's nothing you'll have to do. He went upstairs to see Ma. Let me get my hands on him. Hey, hey, what's all this? Look, here on the porch. Huh? Uh -huh. Matched airplane luggage. Who's is this? It's Pinky's, my friend. Oh, oh, oh is it? Yes, what? it belongs to William Herbert Murray, formerly second assistant cook in a lumber camp. Oh, oh, this is the most beautiful matched luggage you've ever seen. Where in oh. heaven's name did he get matched luggage? Well, and look at this box. He brought presents for every single member of this family. Oh, I said, Joe, what are you talking about? Dan, look, he spent a whole day shopping in San Francisco before he came on down to Sky Ranch. Oh, yeah, no, uh, Dan, what is this? What's going on? I don't know. I think somebody just cut the ground from under me. Bear up, Dan, accept it. It's a homecoming on a heroic scale. Poker. He's been gambling with those lumberjacks. Oh, a 16-year-old boy doesn't beat lumberjacks at poker. Let's call him down here. Yeah, don't say anything now. Not the first few moments he's home. Oh, oh, oh Pinky. Hi, Dan. Just coming down. Pinky, darling. Hi, Mom, Dan. <laughs> Gee, it's good to see you. Why, he's grown a foot and a half. Look at that tan. Hey, Pinky, how'd you get a tan like that doing dishes? Hi, Joan. Hi, everybody. Hi, Pinky. Hi, Grandpa. Pinky, my boy. Well, that's a new suit. It's hand-tailored. Pinky, where in heaven's name? I got you... another one better than this. And two neckties and some shirts. Oh, oh what about this luggage? It? Oh, most of that is empty, Dan. I liked it, so I bought it. The whole set. <laughs> and say, I got some swell presents for everybody. Shall we wait till Grandmother comes down? She's getting into a robe. Pinky, answer me this. Where did you get the money for all this stuff? Pinky? Answer Dan, Pinky. Why, I only spent the money everybody sent me. Oh, What's this? that's what... I beg your pardon. Why, sure, Dan... I get three or four letters a day sometimes. Every one of them with money in it. Oh, no. Dan, you want to see what I got with your $10? Why, Dan, I thought... Dan only sent me $10. But say, Grandfather, I got some swell stuff with the 50 you sent me. Huh? Why, I... 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 I didn't... I... <laughs> hey, what's everybody looking so funny for? I thought it'd be all right to mention it when I got home. Didn't you want me to mention it even now? Gee, it practically made my whole summer. I quit. I'm through. I know when I'm late. <laughs> that night, after the house quieted down and Dan and Hazel were alone in their room, you might have heard the following. Oh, Dan. It's so nice to settle down for the night and know that Pinky's safe home. <sighs> Yes, Hazel, my dear, that was a contented sigh, all right. Yes. I don't think I realized what attention I was under with Pinky gone. I worried about him up in that old lumber camp. Well, your worries are over. He's home and safe, complete with luggage, clothes, and some experience he'll never forget as long as he lives. He was being so grown up all through dinner. <laughs> yes. And the worldly attitude he took toward Hank. Did you notice that? Oh, poor Hank. He couldn't get in a word. Yeah, I'm afraid Pinky's going to make it pretty hard on the rest of the kids for a while. <laughs> I expect him to pull a cigar out of his pocket at any minute. Oh, Dan, you don't think he learned to smoke up there in that dreadful place, do you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Well, I wouldn't be surprised with all those awful characters he came in contact with. Think of getting him into a poker game. Well, I taught him a good lesson. Why not look at it that way? Well, that's not quite the way I like to have him learn lessons. You really don't think he's smoking? Oh, now, Hazel, I'd just no... die if he did. He promised me faithfully that whenever he wanted to smoke, he'd come and tell me first so we could talk it over. The thought of my children sneaking behind my back. Oh, here, here. Come on over and sit down by me. Come on. I've taken off my makeup. I look terrible. Ah, sit down. There. Yeah, I believe you were worried about that boy. 
Isn't that silly? As soon as he's home and I know he's all right, I, I feel trembly inside. Well, you just relax. Your son's never been healthier in his life. He's gained weight, he's happy, he's had a liberal education. What more could you ask? Oh, I know. It's probably been wonderful for him. I... <laughs> He's no doubt sound asleep by this time and dreaming of great big Idaho potatoes. Dan, you're so reassuring. Good. <sighs> hey, it's 10.30. We better get ready for bed. We'll be rounded out early in the morning. We certainly are the late ones tonight. I'll bet everybody else on the place is asleep by now. Up you go. And I'll be in undressed and in my... Mm-hmm. Don't tell me we have a visitor at this hour. Mom. Why, it's Pinky. Come in, darling. We thought you were sound asleep by now. I've been talking to Hank. Well, come on in. Say, that's quite a dressing gown you've got on. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. I looked out in the hall and saw your light on, so I didn't think you were asleep yet. Like this dressing gown, Mom? It's silk. Oh, it's nice, Pinky. The guy told me it was silk. It is, isn't it? Let's see. Well, it, it really is awfully nice. If it isn't, it's the nearest thing to silk, Pink. Gosh, you mean I got chipped? I paid 12 bucks for it. Well, don't worry about it. It fits you beautifully. The thing that sold me on it was this long fringe on this thing you tie around you. See? It's got all different colors. Don't you think that kind of gives it a kind of rich look? I mean, even if it isn't silk, that keeps it from looking cheap. Gives you a very sophisticated look, son. Yeah, that's what I thought when I tried it on. You know, like the guys in the movies who live in penthouses and smoke cigarettes in long holders and stuff like that. Or maybe an expensive cigar, huh? Yeah, sure. Corona, Corona. Why, Pinky, what do you know about cigars? What you mean, Mom? All men know about cigars, don't they, Dan? <laughs> Why, certainly. You should smell the awful stogies they smoked up there in camp. Brother, were they strong. But, Pinky, you didn't. The smell was enough for you, Albert. I'll say. I don't see how they could stand them. Oh, I don't either. Well, I guess I'll go back to bed. Sure will be nice not to have ropes cutting into my back tonight. That bed I had up there was really something. Is your back still sore? Ah, nah. You're toughen up in a lumber camp, Mom. Sure glad to be back, though. And are we glad to have you back, darling? We thought about you all the time. Yeah. When I'd get in bed at night, I'd wonder what you were all doing. Could hardly wait for the mail every day. You did a fine job about the writing, Pink. Everybody read your letters and enjoyed them. Yeah. And it was a swell picture of you and Dan you sent me, Mom. I'm going to put it up on my bureau when we get home. Well, I guess you want to get in your bunks. I got a lot of stuff to tell you, but it's kind of late. I was telling Hank about some of the things that happened, and he went to sleep on me. We'll have a good long session tomorrow, and you can give us all the dope. Yeah, sure. Well, good night, Mom. Good night, Pinky dear. Give me a kiss. Sure. Night. Have a nice long sleep. Okay. Night, Dan. Night. All right. Night. Oh, Danny must have been terribly homesick. I probably couldn't get to sleep and thought of the dressing gown as an excuse to come in here and see us. Isn't that gown a horrible color? It's pretty terrible. He thinks it makes him look sophisticated. Well, how sophisticated can you get? Brother. <laughs> well, maybe you can get the dry cleaners to lose it. Shame on you. <laughs> I'll bet I could. <laughs> You've just heard Chapter 12, Book 71 of One Man's Family, written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 13, entitled End of a Summer Saga, will come to you next week at this same hour. One Man's Family comes to you from California. Recently, NBC received a telegram from a little old lady in Boston. She asks, why are people funny? We don't know why people are funny. We only know that people are funny is funny. That is, Art Linkletter's show, People Are Funny, returns to the NBC air next Tuesday, and it's very funny. Here at Tuesday evening on NBC, you're tuned for the stars on NBC.